So, it's no surprise to anyone how I feel about Steven Universe. I have my gripes with the show, but there are still some aspects I like about it. I know I'm very harsh on the show, but I still find myself enjoying the music in some episodes. Now, out of the way, this is how Steven Universe fails where Owl House succeeds. This does contain spoilers for Owl House Season 2, so you were warned. <sighs> the good old redemption arc is one that never ceases to disappoint. Right? Right. A redemption arc has been heavily popularized, popularized since Nickelodeon's Avatar The Last Airbender gave one of the best redemption arcs in animation. Nay, in the last 20 years, writing communities use Zuko as a blueprint of a character redemption arc. Even if you didn't believe me, you cannot deny the absolute chokehold his redemption arc has on the modern media and how influential it truly was. And it very much influenced the themes of Steven Universe, granting how near almost every antagonist was given a redemption arc. But there are some problems with that, and the most problematic being the Diamonds. The Diamonds are genocidal author authoritarian elitists. Enough said. People often defend them because apparently killing millions of aliens that have the same quote unquote same intelligence as our animals isn't so bad. Yes, I have seen this argument a few too many times, and they say that is redeemable. Yet we see Steven try to establish peace through friendship and kindness to the likes of them. I understand that the message is to destroy the cycle of violence, but it is so distasteful when you use fictional space Nazis as a means to get that point across. It seems like it became an afterthought more than a planned ending. Additionally, it is distasteful because, that, because of the fact that they go far beyond the moral event horizon and they just become irredeemable monsters. It may sound harsh, but it's kind of a bad message to tell kids to be friends with fictional, fictional space, space Nazis. Nazis. Sorry, X space Nazis, because that's so much better. Now I understand in Steven Universe future, Steven really wants nothing to do with them due to the trauma he had to endure for them. But it still stands that he forgave them for what they did, trying to play the moral high ground in a situation that not only doesn't warrant it, but it doesn't need it in the story to begin with. And we can argue that no story needs anything in regards to story writing, but you know what I mean. In Avatar The Last Airbender, Ozai is still punished regardless. Even though Aang chooses not to kill Ozai, he still makes another distinctful choice to punish Ozai, stripping him of his bending privileges and then imprisoned him. So it's not a black and white issue you don't have to kill the antagonists for the story to conclude. You can still punish the antagonists for what they did while also not having a violent end to the situation. On the contrary, if we looked at someone like Hunter or the Golden Guard, he's a product of fed lies and manipulation who grows to see the truth and error of his ways not only in his ways, but in the ways of the Emperor Belos and the Emperor's Coven. Hunter never kills anyone. In fact, he barely harms anyone. He served much more as a nuisance than anything to the main characters, and he has to earn their trust and their forgiveness before anyone starts to actually forgive him. He has several episodes that dedicate themselves to fleshing out his compassion and how he is merely being manipulated to be the person he is. Hunter isn't a villain. He's a victim of abuse. And even though he's made choices that might pe put people in harm's way, he ultimately chooses compassion and friendship over the genocidal manipulative maniac. Steven Universe has this sort of redemption arc with a character like Peridot. Peridot serves the diamonds and even uh, and through the show, she learns slowly that the qualities of life on earth are good. She, at the same time, has to work to gain the trust of the other characters like the Crystal Gems and Lapis. She is a character that works out for a redemption. Steven Universe started the ball off rolling correctly by doing this, yet they failed to execute it by making the servant 
willingly know about the extermination of billions of life forms for the quote unquote expansion of greatness. So the argument of following orders doesn't can't really apply here. The fatal flaw with Steven Universe is by making the villains so extremely flawed in their actions that it becomes reprehensible to think about even forgiving them. While Owl House carefully crafted and chose to make the redeemable antagonists redeemable. That's the beautiful difference between the two shows. Owl House corrects the errors Steven Universe makes by following more in line with what Avatar blueprints while Steven Universe rushes an idea of breaking the circle of violence. Thank you guys for watching another Yonaha Media video. I promise this will be the last time I sh on Steven Universe, at least for a while. I appreciate everyone and everybody's support, especially our Patreon, Harry Smith. You guys can also uh, support us on our Patreon as well. Anyways, that'll do it for today. Thank y'all. Ciao.